Good day ladies and gentlemen, this is Santo Pesonen from the Santo Pesonen Project and this is a tour video of my little studio as well as the gear I use. So you may be wondering, why did I decide to make this video right now? Well, just because, basically. I'll openly admit that I'm a bit of a music gear nerd. I love people showing off the stuff that they have, all of the synths and other musical gear that they use to make their music. And I just figured, might as well do it myself. Just in case anyone happens to be curious as to what sort of gear I use in order to make the music that I make. So without further ado, let us go. So since the kind of music that I make under the Santo Pesanem Project moniker happens to be sort of guitar driven stuff, metal for the most part, I might as well start this video off by showing off my guitar collection. So here they are in this corner. Starting off with some cheap ass Stratocaster clone by a company named Excel. This is the guitar that I used through the WEP all the way up to Devil X Machina. Recorded all of the parts on those first eight albums on this. It is starting to show its age, and honestly haven't played this one in fucking ages. If you look closely you can see that there's some mildew on the fritz there. So yeah, this is pretty much in desperate need of a thorough cleanup and possibly some repair, but Honestly, honestly, I'm more inclined to just replace that one at this point. Next up is the seventh string, Dean Vendetta, which was my main workhorse for the past two albums, Phoenix and the Fall. 24 frets. Two humbucker pickups, volume knob, tone knob, pickup, switch, and seven strings, obviously. So, yeah, that's that one. Moving swiftly on to the four string bass, which is a Harley Benton shorty model. I forget the exact model number, but either way. Shorter scale than your usual bass. Something like three quarters, I believe. 19 frets at a single pickup. This one I got back in 2014, if I remember correctly. This was used from Soulscape onwards, all the way up to Devil X Machina. So, yeah. And then there's the 5 string, the Echo MM305. Which has been the bass that I've used for the latest two albums. I believe this one has 21 frets. Yeah. Three knobs to adjust certain things. I think there's like a volume knob and two EQ knobs. Most likely. Not entirely sure, but uh, yeah. And in this bag over here, 
we have my acoustic guitar. So yeah, here's my acoustic guitar, nylon string, a Montana CL34. Now this is actually the first guitar that I ever owned. Basically I just stole this from my brother when he stopped playing it, <laughs> migrated over to electrics. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's the acoustic. And as for the guitar picks I used, they're all contained within this little, I guess, aluminum container. Just a selection of guitar picks, mostly these. Boss. Just focus. There we go. So yeah, these mostly these boss points eighty eight. Then there's this old ass. I think it's a Dunlop Tortex. A slightly thicker Firestone pick that I used on a couple of tracks. And then a selection of just miscellaneous ones. Moving on to these things over here. Here we have my Art Pro Audio DI box, which has been largely unused for the past couple of years, but I did use this on Devil X Machina to track the bass parts. We've got a face invert, grounding lift, minus 20 dB, attenuators, inputs, input through, and output, obviously. And this little beast is the black box audio destructor, an original effect unit by a UK-based company called Circuit Benders. So this thing, as the name implies, is a distortion pedal with three different modes. Crunch, splatter, saturate, all of which do different things to the sound. There's the bypass switch, we have input, output, and frequency knobs. That one was mainly used on parts of Crawl and Not My Finest Tower. And here is a Boss DS1 distortion pedal. Don't think I've used this one in a the Santo Pesanen project track yet. But uh, yeah, was DS1, that's it. Then we have this Marshall MS2 mini amp that I used um, on Crawl. Basically what I did, basically the outro part of Crawl, those last two synth bass notes, that distortion thing. How I basically did that was I put the synth line, I was basically reamping it, put, the, put it through the black box and then this Marshall MS2, which was recorded by a microphone that I had. And finally, my Cherub tuner, 
also has a metronome in it. And over here is my audio interface. Now, if you watch the making of Devilux Machina miniseries, you may have seen the Behringer UM2 interface that I used to use. But I upgraded from that to this about three years ago. The main reason I wanted to upgrade was because I was I was getting into reamping, growing interested in the concept, and I knew that I was eventually gonna want an interface with more output so that I could well not necessarily reamp but like mangle audio sources with analog gear. And that wasn't really possible with the UM2, with its limited set of outputs. So I upgraded to this one. We have two inputs for mics, or just line. Uh, monitor volume, control, headphone jack that currently has a quarter inch to three and a half millimeter adapter slept into it. Which I just realized I forgot to mention is because, well first of all I don't own a pair of studio monitors or generally not even studio grade headphones because to be frank I don't really care for those. Generally what I do is I just mix with whatever consumer grade headphones I happen to own at any given moment, which currently is the Sony MDRs. So, yeah, I just mix on consumer grade headphones. And around the back here, we have three sets of outputs, of which I generally only use one. MIDI in and out, which have also seen some use, mostly for the synth bass on crawl. I'm gonna, gonna tell you a tiny bit more about that in just a second. So yeah, that's my audio interface. Next to it is this sexy beast, the Korg Minilog, which is the synth you hear on basically all of the synth parts on the fall. Were recorded with this particular synth. Every single synth sound on the fall was recorded with this. So about the synth bass part of the fall. Basically how I recorded those was I programmed the bass line in MIDI within my DAW, which is Reaper. Been my DAW of choice ever since I started doing this whole music thing. And I used the MIDI capabilities of the Complete Audio 6. That's what this interface is, by the way, in case I forgot to mention it. By Native Instruments. So anyway, basically this synth was playing back that pre-programmed bass line. And that was then recorded into its own audio track within Reaper. And I also did something interesting with the minilog with the synth intro of Better World, where I put it through my MS2. And the results were uh, interesting to say the least, if I do say so myself. So yeah, that's the minilog. And I also bought these just 
a couple days ago. Some windscreens for the microphones that have yet to see any use. But um, definitely looking forward to putting these through their paces. Won't have to improvise pop filters out of socks anymore. Going down, we have a few boxes full of cables. Just mostly AV cables in that one. Here we have my, all of my instrument, instrument cables, MIDI, XLR, all of those. And in this one, mostly power supplies and some other miscellaneous shit. Over here, in the corner, that you can barely see, are my microphones. In this bag... ...is a Shure SM58. Yeah, that's it. Dynamic microphone for... Shit. I basically use this one to record the Marshall MS2 for the most part, in case of some reamping stuff that I do with the pedals that I showed earlier. And in this one is my condenser microphone. Which is a Superlux E205. It does its job adequately. But I'm looking into upgrading this pretty shortly, because this one is beginning to die, I believe. One option that I'm looking at is the Audio-Technica AT2020. Heard good things about that one. And if we open this... Some more miscellaneous stuff in here. My external hard drive on which I keep all of my important files. Here is a another analog synthesizer that I got a few months ago. The Behringer TD3 analog baseline synth, which has yet to be used in a track. But I do love this thing's sound capabilities, as limited as they are, in comparison to the Minolog anyway, but still. Sounds cool. And it's pretty affordable. Then again, that's what Behringer is known for. Making great shit, with affordable prices for the bedroom musician. And my latest addition to the gear collection is this MIDI controller, the Korg Micro Key 37. Bought this along with the windscreens a couple of days ago. Still getting used to the feel of this, but uh, certainly feels sturdy. Does its job pretty well. Only minor downside is it doesn't have a MIDI in-out interface. Only works via USB. But 
for the time being, I'm content with having this. So yeah, that's all of the gear I have and use. Hope you found this video interesting in at least some form. And uh, yeah, have a good day.